So today I wanna do something a little different. I wanna actually start with a test and depending on the outcome of that test, you can find out how exactly I fixed this failed Milwaukee M12 battery, but not only fixed it, hopefully added more power to the battery so we get better power and runtime. All right, let's start with the Milwaukee stock M12 battery pack and it is fully charged. We just ran out of juice. All right, guys, this is what we're here for. This is the Milwaukee M12 modified battery pack. Let's see how many cuts we can make. I feel vindicated. So the first time I tried this test, I failed. I took that right here on the chest, but it turns out that I used some cheap Amazon cells and I got a horrible result. There'll be a link to that video down below if you wanna see me fail. It ain't gonna happen often. Now today I turned things around. I bought some good quality cells and check out how much I cut. There's the cut from the modified pack. That is a total of 25 cuts. Now the stock battery pack is right here. Hang on, this, this, this is the short stack. This was 11 cuts with the stock battery pack. So I think mathematically that means the new battery pack or the modified battery pack that I made did 150% give or take better than the stock. Those are some great results. Whew, I am feeling real good. It turns out that math is still intact and Amazon math is still Amazon math. Anyway, from this point forward, I'll show you a little bit of information about the cell that I bought and how you can pick a cell that might be good for your application. And then after that, I'll show you how I fixed this Milwaukee M12 battery pack. Here we go. So let's start by saying this and pay attention. This video is a day or video. That means do at your own risk. Working with lithium cells can be dangerous. We've all seen those videos of houses exploding, neighborhoods blowing up, the earth ending, the whole thing. And you don't wanna be responsible for any of that. So now that that's behind us, let me talk to you a little bit about batteries and what all the numbers mean. So first off, this is a name brand battery. This is Molacell. These are really highly rated. Now there are three numbers when it comes to 18650s, which is what this is, what this is, and what this is, 18650, is just basically the shape of the cells. 18 stands for 18 millimeters wide, 65 millimeters long, and the zero is just there because it's zero and it's it doesn't matter, right? Now the three numbers that you really care about are the voltage, basically 18650s are all around 3.7 volts. So let's put that aside. So the next number is milliamp hours and that's how much like energy you can store in that space. Basically the bigger the number, the better. So those numbers range from about 1000 milliamp hours all the way up to about 4000 milliamp hours. So the third number of the cell that really matters is the CDR, which is the discharge rate. And that's measured in amps. So basically what that means is how quickly can that battery let off the energy? So a good way to wrap up this techie, nerdy kind of stuff is just put the specs of each of these batteries right down below. Over here I have the stock Milwaukee battery and this is the brand new cell that I'm gonna put in the pack. So right down there. All right guys, so let's go over some of the equipment you're gonna need to work with these cells. So let me start by telling you, if you're ever gonna put any effort into working with batteries, get yourself one of these. They're super cheap now. This is a battery spot welder. And trust me, using it makes me giddy. I'll show you how to use this later. I'll actually have a link to all this equipment right down below if you have any questions of what you need. Now the other thing I have is I have some insulator tops for my batteries right here. I have some high temperature tape. That's really important as well. You're gonna need some nickel tabbing material. Uh, this is just a small piece and this lets you connect your batteries together. It's an assortment of small screwdrivers, really helpful. 
obviously pliers, uh, you need needle nose, uh, cutters, the whole thing. And of course, I love this. This is something called Helping Hands, and it lets you just secure stuff as you work on it. You can see here, you can set up your battery, you can use this to hold things, these clamps. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pry this cap off the battery. To do that, I would suggest a knife, an X-Acto knife. You need to get these tabs lifted. You can see I've already done mine. They're in bad shape. Once you're done with that, remove the inside here. Now, it might be a little tight. If your cells are old and they've swollen a little bit, it might be a little tight, so you might need like a pair of pliers to pull that out. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna prep my new batteries with an insulator top and heat resistant tape on both sides. All three batteries will ultimately look just like this. So to keep things simple, I would make sure you identify the positive and negative side of all your cells. Now the positive side, this side right here is the side with the button up top. The negative side is the flat end. So let's orient the new cells in the direction of the old broken pack. So let's begin by removing some of these cells. Now the first thing you're looking for is right in the center, they have this piece of plastic. That's what keeps these group together. So make sure you hold on to that. Now the next step is we have to pry off some of these tabs off the batteries. It it's coming off nice and clean. Beautiful. There we go. Perfect. It wraps around your needle nose. One more time, we're off. That is looking pretty good. No problem, salvage that, okay. So if you just take your time, you can get this stuff off and then you can reuse it. So now that I've oriented my cells in my new pack, identical to the orientation of the original pack, I'm ready to go. Notice I've got my arrows facing up here. That's where my contacts go. So let's start with the upside or the top side of the battery. Let me put it here in my helping hands. This will stabilize it while I work on it. So my identification shows that this is the top and front of the battery pack. My circuit board will sit on like that. You can see I've made some identifications here, so it helps me remember how to wire this thing. Pin that down. That's good enough. And let's do some zappity zap. So I'm gonna turn on my spot welder. You can see I'm on gear five, which is good. There we go. It's better. Pretty happy with that result. Now before you go any further, take your insulator from the top, put it on like that, grab your circuit board, wrap it over top. Now let's flip it over and do the bottom. Beautiful. So make sure you're satisfied with all your spot welds. If you are, you can insert it back into the pack. All right, so my first video was a little bit of a failure. This one was a success, I'd say. 150% more power is super awesome. So speaking of being super awesome, if you could give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below about what you thought I did here today, I would love to hear from you. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're into messing around with batteries, well, there's an awesome video right there that you're gonna wanna check it out. Trust me, it'll light you up.